Right, this video is about the pre-flight checks, I suppose I could call them. Uh, the sort of things that you need to check before uh, setting off on a motorhome adventure. Particularly when your motorhome has not been used or driven for three months now. And uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the water systems. And once we've done the water systems we can check the heating and we can do the fridge and uh, various things follow on from that. Now I have got a checklist and I'll put the links in the description below uh, to the checklist. I probably haven't covered absolutely everything in this checklist. There may be things that I've missed off, so this is my checklist. And I may actually find things uh, as I go along that I need to check, but I've tried to include some of the more important things that you need to check before you set off. So let's have a look at that then. My first job is switch the tap on. Proves I haven't used the outside tap for ages. Right. Going to be using Thetford's set tank cleaner used two or three times a year it says so 300 millilitres in the empty waste tank and minimum of five litres of water We've got graduations on here I think each one's 50 250 300 350 about there okay. slide the lid off Yeah, it does say lukewarm water, so I've got some hot water here. Now, ideally, I should take the motor home for a ride, move it about a little bit. I've also noticed <laughs> that the uh, the full light is on there, so. What you do need to do is to open the the shutter a little bit just to let some of the pressure out. Now, always say this, leave the toilet lid down when you open. And the right way around. Why? Because if you release some pressure in there, that's going to go all over your face. And you don't want that. Probably all right with cleaning fluid, but not with other stuff. So I'm going to leave that open. I'm going to leave this in there. I'm going to leave the seat up to remind me I've got that stuff in there because I don't want to be driving off with that in there. And I'm just going to leave that overnight to do its job. Just going to get rid of the cleaning fluid. I mean, all that is is, well, it's basically cleaning solution isn't it so it should mean that our toilet's nice and clean and now I'm going to rinse out the cassette and I'll give it a good clean right, there's a little trick I learnt this whole unit comes off to give you better access but it's difficult to turn so what you do is you get a little go the right way like I say it's difficult to turn so you need a little bit of leverage on it, but not too much. And this whole unit then comes away, so you can give that bit of a clean. And we can now get access into the inside as well. So just clean around there. It's pretty clean anyway. very careful when you're doing this because the mechanisms are quite delicate. Clean on the inside of the seal there. I'll clean the top of the seal as well.
back on. Oop. Easy doing this one-handed. Now it's on when these lines line up. So I'm going to use this stuff, I'm going to be testing this stuff. So this is Solbio multi-purpose toilet fluid. It says it's a four-in-one and it's organic and green. So it says to use 40 millilitres per 20 millilitres. I think this is a 15, milli, uh, a 15 litre tank. So by my reckon that's 30 millilitres. Right, so the graduations on this are 60 and 75, halfway to the first graduation. Oh, safety tab, it's like opening the wine, this. That's it. it. Smells nice. Very, very fresh. Liters of water. It's very clear. I'll we'll see how we get on with that and I'll let you know. This is quite mucky as well. It's not a glass mainly. Yeah, that's probably just as well doing it from above. Right, I'm just going to uh, clean up and sanitise the fresh water tank. And I've been using this stuff here. This is Purisol. And it's a little bit easier to use than PuraClean, which is the powder form. And it says to use 33 capfuls or 30 millilitres per 25 litres. Now they fresh water tank is 90 litres and I've got about a third of a, of a um, container in here so I guess there's about 100 millilitres in here so it's probably about about right so it says pour the required amount of pure soil into the water tank container fill the tank with fresh water and through to all taps close the taps leave for th for two to 13 hours so i'm going to leave it overnight and empty the tank by pumping out through the taps rinse with fresh water and pump out through the taps fill with fresh mains water and treat with aquasol that's the other stuff that's the to keep it fresh uh, for lasting freshness so I've, I've got on quite well with this i think it's it's pretty safe to use it's nice and easy to use so let's let's do that then we'll be ready. I can leave water in the tank uh, until we're ready to go. It's only about just over um, a week and a bit now. Yeah, so my fresh water, you can see where we are, my fresh water tank access hatch is just under the carpet and just in here. There we are. So I've no idea what it's like in there. So I really don't want to sort of mess about with it. So we're going to fill that up. I'm going to put some Purisol in it and off we go. So I've got me Heos or Heo Solution adapter. Get it, get it back on there. And give it a push. Let's go and fill up. Bit of a shock to the system actually coming out to the van and trying to find where things are, struggling to figure out where my um, filling cap was, where I'd left the hose and all that sort of thing. So, uh, so it's a good idea to start this sort of check a little bit early than you perhaps you'd need to because uh, you need to figure out where things are. I need to figure out where the stop button is on this new camera. 
Right, I'm going to be filling it up with water and running it through the tap, so I need to make sure that this drain valve is closed. The other thing to do is make sure all the taps are closed. So over the winter we've left them in the on position. So make sure they're closed, otherwise you'll have water everywhere. All right, the water's getting towards the top, so I'm going to start running these through. The other thing you need to remember to do is to switch the pump on. You can hear it going now. Let's switch this tap on. Start with the cold water. Just trickling through now. It's coming through a little bit. And the same with the shower. I'll just put the shower hose in the sink. That's coming through. So that's all right. So we'll switch to the hot now. I'll do that in the kitchen. It's always supposed to go to the tap that's highest. I think this is the highest tap. Now what that's doing is it's pulling water through the boiler, which is down there. As you can see it's emptying water out of there, into the boiler, and into the hot taps. So that's priming the water through. There we go, hot water coming through. That's that one. Turn that to hot. And that's it. Yeah, so what we've done there is we've pulled water through into the boiler, into the taps, both hot and cold, so that solution's sitting inside the pipes up to the tap, and it's in the tank. So we're going to leave that overnight, and then we'll rinse it out with fresh water in the morning. Yeah, this tank is open to the elements, really, so it's not... So it's got a heater on it, that's the, one of the heater elements in it, but uh, it is open to the elements there. I will switch the pump off overnight, I don't want to leave that on. Right, we've uh, left the Purisol in the tank overnight, and it, sh it should have done its job, so I now need to rinse the tank out empty it out, rinse it out and run it run it through with some fresh water. So I'm just going to do that now. All right, the fresh water drain is up this end of the van. It's there. Oop. Yeah, so that's the collapse flexible waste pipe into water, empty fresh, confirm. And there we are. So just to make sure that all the water comes out of the taps, make sure the taps are open. This one too, and the one in the shower. There we go, it's empty. So that'll be a while doing that. Right, the other thing to do is to drain the boiler out. The other thing I've done is just switch the pump on for a few seconds. Empty some of the water out. Nothing coming out of the tap, so I know it's drained out. I'm going to fill up the tank again. So filling up the water again. I've reached about 50% full, so I'm just going to switch the pump on and we'll run some water through the taps. Water. 
I'm doing pump. Get some fresh water into, into the boiler. So obviously pushing out the, uh, the cleaning fluid that was in there. So once that starts to come through, it'll be fresh water. So same as before, open that up, open the taps up. Yeah, so probably better just to add here, once you've rinsed out the tank and you've emptied it, it's then safe to refill with fresh water and it should be safe to drink. That's the water done, well, just about done. Uh, so I've cleaned out the, or sanitized the fresh water tank and we've I've cleaned the toilet and put some toilet fluid in there. I'm going to leave the tank with about a quarter of a, tank full in there of fresh water and I will add some uh, just remind me some drops of the aquasol just to keep it fresh in the week or two leading up to when we go away yeah whenever I've done this before I've always had a little drink of <laughs> drink of the water they'll always ask you will you drink the water and it tastes horrible it's just like the ordinary tap water that we get in Southport, absolutely disgusting. Yeah, so this is the Aquasol complete water treatment, and it says to add a cap full to every 25 litres. So I've got about 25 litres in there. Yeah, so I've used this stuff in the past, Phoenix waste tank cleaner. The tank in this motorhome we don't have access via the via a hatch at the top so just really a case of pouring it down the sink and leaving it and it says to use yeah it says to use a hundred millilitres of waste pipe and tank cleaner and five to ten litres of warm water. So it's not a lot of that but uh, what amuses me it says you've got to put it in there put some water in there and then shake the tank i think that's about as much shaking as I can do without driving it oh. i've still got to empty the wastewater tank so i'll do that and whilst that's emptying i'll be checking the uh, the various systems obviously making sure i've got no leaks if i switch the water pump on Put the heating on, that way we can check the heating's working. I will check it on electric and I will check it on gas as well. We'll take it off, hook up and we'll try it on gas. And we'll do the same with the fridge. So I need to switch the fridge on. I can actually do it from here. Always forget these things. So we'll just put that on auto now. Uh, incidentally, I always find that setting two works fairly well for the fridge. The fridge is fairly clean, but I will give it a clean before we set off. It's part of my cleaning schedule, but I just want to make sure it gets cold for now. And we want to make sure the van warms up. So whilst the van's warming up, I'm getting the radiators on, I'm going to do some checks on the engine. Went up to the waist now. Horrible bits coming out there. Right, check the oil. Give it a wipe first. Yeah, that's fine up to the, uh, just up to the second mark on it. Check the brake fluid levels. Quite difficult to see this because it's quite clear. Oh, it's 
if if you're not sure have a look inside yeah comes up to about there check the header tank fluid for the radiator it's minimum that's maximum just above I mean it could probably do with the top up actually but it's not too bad and screen washer fluid I have to pull this pipe out God all seasons push the pipe back down close the lid the other thing I'm going to check is this drain pipe here so it's like pretty bunged up that so I'll clear of that out yeah just get some of the rubbish out of here goodness knows what's in there So bad there. Right, I think it's a good idea just to check that these holes do actually drain out. There we go. Yeah, we know they're draining. There is another one up here as well, just check that's not blocked. Oh, it did drain, it's all right. Done a visual inspection of the hose, you can't really see much. And the van has been serviced three months ago, so it should, should be all right. It is only a year old, but obviously, on older vans, you probably want to check the condition of the hoses and if you can, the drive belts. But you can't even see that it's just about no, I can't even see it. I think I'll leave that to the experts. I can't see any cuts or abrasions or anything like that. Do the other ones. I'm not going to start the engine, but I just want to check there's no uh, undue warning lights coming up. Sometimes you get error codes or that sort of thing. Obviously, I'll take it for a run before we actually go anywhere. But there's uh, no error lights or anything like that. The seatbelt warning light, the ignition light. Uh, there's no oil pressure obviously because I haven't started the uh, um, the thing. But what I can do now is I can check the lights. Got these marker lights on the side, they're on. Yeah, one there, one there, and one there. Rear light. Quite difficult to see in the sun, but marker lights are on up there. And the light is on there. Oh, just about, yeah, I think you can see that. That's it. Let's check both lights are on there. Lights that sometimes get forgotten are these marker lights up there. Yeah, they're both on. And the side marker lights down here. Brake light. Brake light. Brake light. Sometimes you have to improvise. The heating's warming up, the pipes are getting nice and warm now. Ouch. Check the fluid in the header tank for the Audi. That's slightly above max, so probably because it's just warmed up. I'm going to take the fridge vents off now. That way. That's it. I know I put a fridge vent on the top one. Don't ever seem to think I need it. I might put these away now. That's away for the winter. Another checklist. Yes. 
Yes. Yowch, that's hot. That is quite hot. Check the cold. Now it is hot now. Ah. Hot. Yowch. Yeah, that's hot. Let's just check how much gas we got. That's fairly full, that one. I think these were both fairly full at the end of travel, so it should be alright. I haven't got a level gauge, but you can get these gauges, I suppose, to tell you how much. You can usually feel how much they've got in there. So, switch the gas on, turn the knob anti clockwise, and hold down that green button. That's the the anti-surge button. Sometimes you have to press that button, that's the crash sensor, but I think only if you've had a crash. Let's check the cooker's working. Quite difficult to do when you're one hand free. Three burners are running. Flames are nice and blue. That's good. Check the hot electric hot plate. Just put it on a couple of bars. It takes a while to, to warm up that, so I'll come back to that in a second. I don't know if you saw that, but with uh, all these gas appliances, you do have to hold the button in, the knob in, after, you, after, after it's lit. But that's the grill. Do the same for the oven. Turn. Oh, I've got to do it. Push it in and turn it. Hold it in. Press the button. Temperature's warming up nicely in here now, 14 and a half. There is a blower fan on this uh, in the bottom here. If you wonder what one of those switches is for, that's to switch a blower fan like this. This one blows out warm air, so you can actually feel the heat. And there's another in this fan. There's another fan up the front here that blows out warm air there as well. So as a good check, the telly's working. Go. I'll let that tune itself in. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. See you Monday. Bye for now. Right, the hot plate's getting hot. I'm not even going to go near that, but that's definitely working. So I know that's working. Electric hot plate. Microwave. That's another thing to check. That's it. Bit of water in there. wrap the oops I always wrap the plate in an old tea towel it seems to stop most of the rattles okay. the other thing was to check the date on the fire extinguisher and I think I've looked at these before and I thought oh they haven't got a date on them this actually has got a date on it and it's a second of 15. This is actually five years old, so I'm really embarrassed to say that, that my fire extinguisher is way out of date, so I must get a new one. 
it's one of those things that you forget to check. I know the cooker's working all right, so I'm just going to cover it up. This is like um, a drying mat, so uh, it helps stop the rattles. I've got a uh, an oven towel as well. Sometimes I use that. Well, I know the batteries are being charged, obviously, because we've been on electric hookup for a while. So um, I probably need to take them off hookup and just check that they can hold their charge. So I'm going to do that. Another reason for doing that is so that I can check the fridge works on gas and we don't get any alarms or anything. Yeah, so I've unplugged the electricity and we're now running on, well, solar, I guess. Yeah, 0.6 amps from the solar. Like I say, we're in a shady position here and the fridge has changed over to gas. So I'm going to have a look at the temperature of the fridge and make sure it's getting cold. It seems to take ages to get... Oh, you can feel the freezer box quite cold in there. I'll get a thermometer there. Right, I think it's a good idea to have a look underneath the van. Check the condition of the exhaust. That look all right. Check the condition of the silencer. Hopefully you can see that if I can get in there. I can't get in there. That's under there. Check you've got no sort of leaks or anything. Nothing. You can have a look on the floor. There shouldn't be any leaks under there now. Obviously you don't want water leaking out your fresh water tank. Might be an idea just to check your, your discs as well. can't quite see the pads here but uh, see a little bit of rust on there but it's been sitting for a while and that will soon rub, up, rub off you can feel around the shock absorber see if there's any leaks or anything got access to a camera you can have a look at the camera footage check you've got no oil, oil leaks good idea to have a look at the condition of the spare Probably an idea to get it down and check the pressure as well. Right, check the tyre pressures. That's the earth point. And this thing down here, that's the positive. So I just screw this thing on here. And it's a bit high because I put some extra pressure and put some extra pressure in the tyre earlier. So we can let some of that out. I'd say about 65. Yeah, put that up to about 75, 76. I'll keep an eye on this because it might have a leaky valve or it might be leaking around the rims slightly. But we need to keep an eye on it. I suppose this illustrates just how important it is to check your pressures regularly. Trouble is, when you're not driving it for three months, you don't, don't think to bother if you're not washing it. Yeah, we may check the, that's working. We've checked the fridge is working. Um, we need something to check with. I could probably do with a, um, one of those main socket condition checkers, but this will do for now. Ah, not plugged in. <laughs> I thought I was checking the heating, but I, I didn't actually switch the gas on. So we're now running the heating on gas, about 15 degrees. So I think I'll have a cup of coffee and come back and make sure that's heating up. Got my emergency kit. It's got high-vis jacket in it, jump leads, a emergency warning triangle thingy, Still got a breathalyzer thing from France, which apparently you don't need anymore. Uh, it's got a little first aid kit and continental pin type plug adapters. Bizarrely, and a load of plastic bags. The emergency kit lives under the driver's seat under this thing here. Right, it's definitely warming up in here now. 
up to 17. I just had a cup of coffee. I can hear the heater going. Yeah, you can hear it going there. So I know it's working on gas. So something I want to check now is just inside the cupboards and make sure we've got no leaks or anything. All right, just start to the cupboard at the back of the bed. Just looking for any signs of water or anything. And if you have any of these pipes leak, it soon becomes obvious if there's any water anywhere. Let's have a look, make sure there's nothing leaking on the bathroom floor. Just check the pipes, don't feel wet or anything, there's no... Find a bit of water. Check there's no leaks around the pump. It has just reminded me that I need to clean the aqua roll there. It does look pretty clean in there. <laughs> but uh, I, will, I will clean it out. Right, so back on mains. I'm just checking the temperature of the fridge. It does take a time to cut, cool down. Obviously I've got the door open now, so it's warming up. It had got down to about six degrees. This is an external uh, probe. So if I can put that in the freezer box, I might get an idea how cold the freezer box is. Put the heating back on two bars, that's two kilowatts back on manual so it will come on if the temperature gets below 10 degrees. Probably just ought to check the main sockets work. Check the spotlights. Check all the other lights. That light's working under there. That's those lights and the kitchen lights. Yep, they're working. Wow. I checked my aerial earlier, so I know that's working. Fridge is working. I think I'm just about there. Obviously, I've got to wash it and a few other things to do. Um, battery. I mean, I'm, I've got to be honest, the, the batteries are probably going to be all right. But uh, obviously if they were five years old, then probably have a look at the condition there. So the vehicle battery is now being charged by solar and mains is charging the leisure battery. And we know mains systems are working. So we've got, got to wash it. Uh, going to clean the carpets inside out, sofas. Well, I hope you found this video useful. It's sort of things that need to be done before you set off. Um, I'm hoping that I can get away at Easter following my eye operation, but I'm not absolutely sure I'll be able to drive. So I have to play that by, I'm going to say play it by ear, I'll play it by eye, I guess. But uh, all it really remains for me to do now is to give the van a proper clean inside and out and uh, perhaps give it a wax as well. So I won't film all of that, otherwise this video will be hours long and uh, I'm sure you're switched off by then. Just really wanted to cover the important things to check. Like I say, my checklist is in the description below. And it is a very, very simple checklist. Uh, just with a list of things on it. And uh, I hope you find it useful. So if you've uh, found this video useful, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notifications icon and I'll catch up with you soon. So have a really good holiday if you're going away. Uh, I can't wait to get away. 
Whether it's going to be this April or whether I'm going to have to wait till May, I don't know yet. But I still can't wait to get away. Just doing all the preparations here has made me uh, keen to get away. So I'll stop rambling now and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye then.